Luda told man that I am. I had problems coming on. First, I couldn't solve, I just couldn't figure out all these gadgets and stuff. So eventually they sorted it out, and I'm now realizing that okay, we already this six, these are uh, eleven minutes after four already, and I've already told everyone that we're going to be starting by four twenty. But I see there is one person online, and now there are two of you. So here is what we'll do: we'll freestyle and just have fun generally until four twenty. Since I've told everyone. I've rescheduled to 420. First thing first, off the bat, I'm sorry about that. I am something of a stickler for time, and I'm quite notorious for it. I really hate time wasters. And I hate wait, waiting for people, and I also hate keeping people waiting. So I tried my best to try for four, but you see, problem is, all these techie things, it's quite tough for we old men. We're just learning on the hoof. So somewhere along the line, problem got solved. It probably wasn't as difficult as I had thought it was. So here we are. I've come earlier than I told everyone I'm going to be here since I'm the one who changed the time. So what we'll do is, before we start unbundling the several insanities of the Nigerian state, which is actually what I really love us to talk about today, um, maybe we just call this what Baba Fela used to do when we went to the shrine back in the days. He just give you those little extras, you know? It's beyond the ones you expected to get. Maybe you're lucky to catch a Riaza. Maybe you're lucky Baba caught something in the moment. So let's play with that. But Baba Buhari has actually offered us something to start with, if you really think about it. Because here is the thing. What could be more insane? So we just start with the insanity of our messianic president known as Muhammadu, the son of Buhari. Let's start with him. So in 2014, most of you, I'm sure some of you who are even watching me, you were busy jumping up and down the place. You found your messiah, shortcut to revolution. Buhari will come, you fight corruption, you chase away all the corrupt people in Nigeria on your behalf, and then El Dorado will come. Now let's examine the insanities that are embedded in those presumptions. Here was a man who had spent 30 years out of power, <laughs> who did not, not one degree did he acquire in those 30 years. Hmm. Akika, as conceited as Obasan is, as much as, as intensely as I might dislike the work of his hands, or hate the work of his hands, I must say, and dislike the man, I still have to consider the fact that the man is curious enough to keep improving himself. At his age, he still studies. It's obvious that he keeps up with his mental acuity. Our president, completely uncurious in any way, shape, or form. So we believed, all of us, I'm not one, no, but I'm using all of us so that at least you don't feel like we all belong together. All of us are crazy people. I mean, I mean crazy, but I'm not mad. All of us are born together on a carry Messiah 2014, 2015. I won on that. Several people won on that. On that no year. Now, see, six years, the man could not build a single facility. He could not equip one that would be sufficiently capable of diagnosing whatever might ail any gerontocrat in Nigeria. Say what you might of Anini. Uh, what was that one's name? Is Anini yeah, really is the Anini of politics? That one that was Minister of Works. At least he built a wing for them in usage. For gerontocrats, old people go there. It's more or less the center. At least it was the last time I heard. What has Wari done? Six years, he has to go to London. Look at the insanity of it all. And then you have a labor minister, mind you, a medical doctor, made a labor minister. Who is so shameless that he's spouting lies? Almost like Lai Mohammed. And you actually have Nigerians 
who are applauding these insanities, who believe there is something about the pig president, the president of the most popular, the same country where the Saudi royal used to come in the 60s to UCH. UCH was a world-renowned center for tropical medicine. The Saudi royal house would come to UCH to be treated by our doctors, not European doctors, Nigerian doctors, trained in Nigeria. And the same country, we are reduced today to the point where our ruler, the maximum ruler of Nigeria, <laughs> could not find any help for his medical needs in Nigeria. He has to run all the way to England. It's not that he went to England that is proof of our insanity. What is actually proof of our insanity is that there, none of us, or at least the majority of us, at least the critical ones who open their mouths to talk in this country are sleepwalkers. None of us actually believes that there is something fundamentally wrong. And the man feels no shame. And the entire ruling class sees absolutely nothing wrong. That in a country of 200 million people, our health is so ignored and neglected that our number one citizen, oh, sorry, there I go, Emma Bino, we are not citizens. <laughs> Let me just say, the number one citizen of Nigeria, at least amongst the citizens of Nigeria, is the number one. The number one citizen of Nigeria has to go, but then what's new? It didn't start today. Babangidas were the Kulo party, which is what is killing him today. He mustn't die quickly. By the grace of God, he mustn't die now. He must see judgment before he dies. That the Kulo party. Look at since when our people have been shaming us. But we ourselves, how have we changed the dynamics? So let's just leave Baba Buhari and our dear brothers in the diaspora who are doing us proud, helping us to welcome him, make him not feel at home so that he can come back to meet us quickly. Baba Buhari, we have missed you. Hmm? Biko, we have missed you. I am sorry that I'm having to freestyle. You know, I'm a man who loves the sound of my own voice. And I have now committed the bobo of telling everybody we are starting 20 past four. We're two minutes to that time. Hopefully, I'll still have something sensible. How can a madman say anything sensible? You know, I can't possibly have anything sensible to say. But here is the thing. How sensible can any Nigerian really be? Can we even afford to be sensible? I want us to explore, because I'm fond. I think what I'll do is I see this is, 60, this is 19 past the hour. OK, maybe what I'll do is let me tell you all one small story whilst we wait for the minute to pass. I told that story in a, I told it already in an essay I posted. It was of the little frog, the one that said it was in his nature to croak. So whether other people might like the fact that he's croaking or not, it doesn't matter. It is merely doing that which it had been destined and proposed to do. So I'm doing what I'm destined and proposed to do. Be the madman in a land of people who are very sane. So you are all sane, okay? I'm the insane one. So welcome to this afternoon's Madman's Rant. Maybe that's all we should be calling it now. Because it's now 20 past the hour. My name's remained, no, they've told me proper English is my name. So my name remains daily faro to me. I'm your resident madman. And I want us to look at Nigeria together and try to make sense of our insanities. OK, so now, how do you make sense out of insanity? I tend to run around. I, I say most times that same people don't live in Nigeria. That only the insane lives here. 
that the Nigerians that are sane have actually fled. They've escaped, to borrow Shenkuti's word. They've escaped. They fled. Those who go to Europe have gone to Europe. Some of them crawl through the Sahara. You get the picture. I've already painted this picture several times. The people who are sane have actually fled because it's the only way to survive. It's a madhouse, see? The, the, there are some people who went through more genteel routes. They, they went, they killed at the embassy. Some had to lie. Some told the truth, but they escaped. So same people have left. And I know that when I say these things, a lot of Nigerians have problems with it because they would prefer to hold on to the illusion of sanity in an insane place. So let me show you how insane we are. Driving to a roundabout in Nigeria, and as we are approaching the roundabout, if you come from a sane society, perhaps you are one of our brothers in the diaspora, and you drove into the roundabout assuming, like any sane person, quote and unquote, that you had the right of way somehow, based on your own understanding of sanity, you will most likely end up dead. Because in these parts, we wait to see who decides to be sane when we are dealing with our roundabouts. If you think you are sane and you're waiting for the person with the right of way, the person with the right of way, not knowing he has the right of way, is busy abusing you for being a fool and disturbing and waiting for him. And then the person behind you who does not realize that you are doing the right thing might actually run into you from behind if he's not busy abusing you as well. So your sanity becomes a liability because you do not live in a sane place. But let's take this away from the obvious that all of us misses. And now let's begin to deal with the particulars. So recently, one white man, I believe his name is Tom Tocqueville, is a member of the British Parliament. And he was um, vibrating in the British House of Commons during the NSAS uh, debate in the British House of Commons. And he spoke of how Gowon came with a sizable portion of the Nigerian Central Bank when he left Nigeria after the coup in 1975, I believe that was, yeah. And he said it right there in the House of Commons. And it was a good joke, right? Everybody laughed, but I didn't laugh. Because I recall something my grandmother told me as a kid. There's a Yoruba proverb. He says, it means that the, the thief, the actual burglar, is not as guilty as the receiver of the stolen goods. A member of the British Parliament sat down in the Parliament and spoke about how Gowon came with the Nigerian Treasury. The question is, who received when it came? Well, I filed it away for, for future, because I still intend to write on certain, on certain subjects, and this was material I just filed away that I'll deal with in future. That was until last week. I believe it was Friday, to be specific. A British court, I believe a court martial, actually, sentenced a major general who was retired since 20, he retired in 2018. I believe his name was Jack Welch. He was sentenced to 21 months imprisonment because he claimed a total of 48,000 pounds in excess of what he was allowed in child education benefit. So they sentenced him to 21 months in prison and they stripped him of his ranks. So I began to ask myself, this society, I've been in Britain when they're busy advertising dog food, health insurance, stuff that reminds me that the Nigerian is only vicariously human 
and they are the ones who are actually truly human because they've gone beyond dealing with the basics. They're talking about pet cemetery, they're advertising wheels, they're advertising graves, they're advertising funerals, people are buying their funerals. So I thought these were people who have moved beyond the basics and they have evolved. And then I saw this and I could not understand. How is it that these same people who would gladly receive our own stolen patrimony and commonwealth, who brutally exploited us for years, were so brutal in dealing with the violation of and desecration of their own order, but they are busy always conniving and enabling the worst of our own ruler's instinct. So I said to myself, ah, they are not only double standards, they are insane standards. It's okay for we Nigerians to be mad, if we elect to be mad, but they will not allow insanity in their own space. So when we want sanity, such as in the Ibori case, we outsource sanity. I said to myself, Nigeria has enough insanities to go around. And that was all I thought it was until then. We started dealing with, first it was 50 million cassava and corn eating soldiers. Agbado too, they were going to eat Agbado. And then it became no. It was a slip of mouth or slip of tongue. Maybe it meant 50,000, or maybe it was even 5,000. But let me even accept the 50,000 variant. So this super army of Agbadu corn and cassava eating soldiers, are they the ones that would have to face the 30,000 bandits that the governor of Zamfara says he has in his state. 30,000. I'm not sure the total number of Nigerian soldiers under harm is more than 120,000. So you mean that in Zamfara state alone, by the gross underestimation of the governor of the state, there are 30,000 AK-47 and more sophisticated weapon wielding bandits ready for deployment to different parts of Nigeria. But this cassava eating Agbado corn eating army. Maybe they'll become mutants because they are eating so much cassava and Agbado. But then, it's Nigeria, anything can happen. And then I thought to myself, the government actually came out and said that it has 10 point something million children out of school. UNICEF, I believe, said they were about 14 million. The government has admitted 10 point something million. Ten points. Then the total population of Jordan is 10 million. So Nigeria actually can afford to ruin the lives of the population of Jordan. And remember, it's a progressive thing. We're talking about the ones who are out of school today. The ones who are out of school yesterday and have gone beyond age, schooling age were not factored into these numbers, both by the UNICEF and by the government itself. Mm. And then today, <laughs> I 
As I was driving, I got to a traffic light, and there was a last man. And the gentleman walked up to me, and he was not much different from an orizer. He wasn't belligerent in any way. He was differential at... In fact, he was quite differential, quite nice too, but he was essentially begging. And I asked myself, this guy is probably a graduate because I've seen some gentlemen that I went to university with wearing last mile uniform. But this is what he has been reduced to by a system that has weaponized poverty. But then, that's the normal thing now, isn't it? In fact, the campaign with, I think they are telling, and they even doing poverty alleviation, giving people 20,000 naira. Yeah, you probably tell me that is money outside Lagos. But how much wealth can the person create? Those are merely handouts that are guaranteed to ensure that the person remains existential. Fix the infrastructure. Fix electricity. Fix security. You tell people to go back to the farms. But they plant and they cannot. Oh, yeah. Somebody, Mr. Ogumola, is saying that it's even 5,000. What, what are they meant to do with that? You're weaponizing poverty, creating a culture of amajiri all over the country, destroying the productive capacity of the people so that they will not be able to question the evil governance system. How does one make sense of insanity? How? The one they call Ghana in Benue. You spoke peace to a violent man. He dropped his arms and he was coming your way and you killed him. Now you've created several Ghanas. Now that part of the country is up in flames. What kind of insane people are we? Look, let me tell you one funny story about my looks. It started with them show, you know the story already, them show where detention at the time, they are at least their confinement because the poor man is still more or less in detention now. He can't leave Abuja. Meanwhile, the person will keep on there, they jump up and down the place. So if she already needs Let's even look at that. So what if Shore has health care issue? The court, that judge you see down there, and say that a country where the president can go out for checkup, a citizen who can afford it cannot go because the state has elected to slap spurious charges on him. Reason it. How do you reason insanity? So all of us, we don't the reason insanity. Some of us don't consider say we insane. So when they picked them, she worried that time. I said I wasn't combing my hair. Been over a year now. But what was the point, you might ask? I say this because this is the last time you're all going to see me with these dreads. They get shown off today. They get shown off today, but they've served their purposes. And what was the purpose? I wanted you guys to see just how mad we've all become. How we've normalized madness. How we've allowed what should be abominations to become commonplace in our country. The more the hair became tangled, the happier I became at the shock I was seeing on the faces of those of you who think you are normal when I come into your midst. I am blessed to be able to afford to enter almost any place you can enter in Nigeria as long as it's not restricted. So when I enter the midst of our rich and powerful, in their restaurants, sitting next to them in airplanes, 
in airport lounges. I see them look at me. They're looking at me funny. Who's the madman? Meanwhile, me, I'm looking at them. Look at idiots and mad people. Normalizing insanity and not talking. So you're making money and then what? You want me to get excited about Odua Republic and start yapping with you about Fulani this, Fulani that? What about the Fulanis in Lagos? The people who are trying to, who are planning to kill me. Are they, are they from Chicago? No. It's the ruling hegemony in this town. It's the ruling hegemony. What the insecurities? In Lagos, you are worried about insecurity. You are worried about who is the madman? Who is actually the real madman? Where, where else in the entire wide world would the people be governed by a dog that is not authored by them? Where else in the world would victims be busy defending their oppressors? Where else in the entire wide world would you find the people who would be telling themselves the solution to their problem lies in going to war? before they can talk to themselves, because a group of people cut across the entirety of their mad country. The people oppressing you are from your own tribe. They speak your language. They eat your food. They are your brothers. The Fulani virus of feudalism, it has escaped. It's jumped host. It's everywhere. Then like my brother Tai will just tweet, just posted at me now, victims are busy defending their oppressors. This insanity has to end. There cannot be one standard for the whole world and another standard for us. Our standards cannot waver. It is not possible, it is not possible that there will be a stand, look, what is normalcy? What is insanity? Normalcy is found in an aggregation of what a society permits. That is what is normal. If in a society you can bend down and be crapping on the road, that is normal. In Nigeria, if you are pressed, in most parts of Lagos, you can step to a road to, to one what you consider a secluded part, flash out your will if you are a guy, or crouch if you are a woman, and you are doing your business. And everybody will say, nobody will see anything wrong with what you're doing. But there are several countries in the world where the Nigerian would know, if it wouldn't cross his mind to do that because it is not the accepted behavior in the society. I also wrote a story that I read. He spoke of, he wrote of um, a day when he felt like putting his horn and he had to drive into the forest somewhere in Canada. He had to drive into a very quiet part where nobody inhabited, into, well, into the wild, to go and be hooting his horn. Because he needed to allow the Nigerian insanity in him to find expression. But this can continue. We can pass this on to our children. At some point, we have to understand that the standards that binds the world binds us too. You're raising children who will inherit a country from you that they cannot live in. This is dangerous. It has um, been a journey going around advertising my own insanity, perhaps as a counterfoil to your collective sanity. Because you are the same ones, and I'm the insane. I'm the one who goes around looking insane. You are all the ones that are very sane. But the time has come when this insanity must end. So, in the coming days, weeks, perhaps months, however long it takes, I shall be doing a series of talks 
laying out the specifics of what I see as the way out. Enough of postulations. It is time to start dealing with concrete actions. As I have intimated in my posts in the past week, I have completed works on my second book, which is tentatively titled, no, it's not even long, it's no longer tentative. It is titled, The Imperatives of the Nigerian Revolution. My brother, Taiwo Akinlami, wrote a section of that book, and that section lays out a non-violent path to the achievement of a new Nigeria. The vision for the new Nigeria is equally laid out clearly in the proposed constitution. At my next birthday, I'm going to be 53. I can't live forever. Neither will you. If you like, be 15 years old. I was 15 years old yesterday. Look at me now. The dreads are hiding my gray, but you can see them peeking through in the bed. We are all growing old. It is time to start dealing with specifics. Even if we do not achieve this in our lifetime, if it pleases God that it be our children that would achieve it, it is time to start now. This insanity must end. There cannot be two standards and there is nowhere for us to run to. If you're busy watching CNN, you would have been seeing the scenes coming out of Minnesota with the Floyd trial. I've traveled, I've had the benefit of traveling in Europe and America, and what I can tell you is this. I've never come across a single Nigerian outside Nigeria who doesn't want to come back to Nigeria. Everybody won't come back home. But if we don't build home, home will be destroyed. It's already falling apart. I just told you, 30,000 under harms in Zamfara alone. So when people are busy shouting, let's break Nigeria, do we have 30,000 soldiers ready? Do we even have three? So let's understand that our issues are far more complex. We should not allow ourselves to stumble into some insane, because all of you are Yahweh, and you think I'm the mad one. So please, we need to sit down, and I promise the book will come out by the grace of God before the end of this month, or by the end of the month, definitely on or before the 1st of May. As usual, I'll make it available for free within the first, maybe after two weeks, it'll be available for free download by everybody who wants it. But I'll be asking you to do more than read books. And I would also be asking myself to do more than talk. Concrete actions would have to be taken to end this madness. Our children must not inherit this from us. So, let this insanity begin to end. Capish? This insanity must end. It must end. This insanity has to end. Have a nice day, everyone. See you again soon. And I promise, I promise, I'm gonna make sure that this insanity ends before we end. Have a lovely day, everyone. God bless.